previously in the CNS Pharmacology Masterclass, we talked about the anti-epileptic drugs classification and we mentioned that we have a first generation anti-epileptics which are also called the classic anti-epileptics or the older anti-epileptics and we have the second generation anti-epileptics which are also called the newer anti-epileptics and ethosexamide is included in the first generation and another example of the first generation anti-epileptics include the phenytoin, the carbamazepine, the valproic acid, the phenobarbital and the benzodiazepines. Examples of the second generation include the vigabetrine, the lamotrigine, the topiramate, the leave atricetam, the gabapentine and pregabaline and the tigapine. So in our talk about the ethosuximide, we will start with an overview. So a famous trade name for the ethosuximide is the zarontine, and the ethosuximide is the least toxic anti-epileptic drug. And ethosuximide is mainly used in treatment of absence seizures, and it was first synthesized in 1957, and it was a big help to children with absence seizures. That is because the absence seizures affect the children population and all the other options of anti-epileptic drugs to treat the absence seizures were very toxic. And that is why the ethosuximide discovery was a big help to these children with the absence seizures. Now let's talk about the mechanism for action so ethosuximide work by blocking the T-type calcium channels in the thalamocortical neurons. So if you remember previously in the CNS pharmacology masterclass, we talked about the pathophysiology of the absence seizures. And we mentioned that the T-type calcium channels in the case of absence seizures, they are dysfunctional and ethosuximide work on these channels to block them to treat these type of seizures. Regarding the therapeutic uses, so as we mentioned, it's used in treatment of absence seizures and it is the first line drug for these seizures. And it can be used as monotherapy for absence seizures unless generalized onset tonic clonic seizures are associated with the absence seizures in the same patient and that is when the valproic acid is preferred to treat that type of patient. Regarding the dosing, so in children, ethosuximide starting dose is 10 to 15 milligrams per kilograms per day, and the maintenance dose can be from 15 milligrams to 40 milligrams per kilogram per day, depending on the response. While in adults, the starting dose is 250 milligrams per day and titrated up until response occur and the max dose is 1500 milligrams per day. Now let's talk about the adverse effects. So ethosuximide is well tolerated and it is less toxic than the other anti-epileptics and the main side effects that comes with ethosuximide are dose dependent. They occur with higher doses of the ethosuximide and they include the GIT symptoms in form of abdominal pain, nausea and vomiting, and also patient may suffer from headache and dizziness and euphoria. And rare adverse effects may include psychosis, depression, and systemic lobus erythematosus. Moving on to talk about the pharmacokinetics of the ethosuximide. So it is available as oral formulations in form of capsules and oral suspension and absorption is almost complete with bioavailability of 90% and peak plasma levels reached within three hours after the oral administration. Regarding distribution, 
The ethotoxamide doesn't bind to plasma proteins and it readily crosses to the blood-brain barrier to exert its effects. And 80% of the ethotoxamide dose given to the patient is metabolized by the liver, mainly by the cytochrome B450 enzyme system, specifically the CYP3A4, and it is metabolized to inactive metabolites. So 80% is metabolized and 20% is excreted and changed in the urine. And its half-life is around 40 hours. Regarding the drug interactions, so the valproic acid inhibit the ethosuximide metabolism if they are co-administered together and this lead to decrease the ethosuximide clearance leading to higher concentrations of the drug in the blood so it is important to take that into consideration and the ethosuximide is contraindicated in case of hypersensitivity reactions to the medication itself in the patient or to the succinamides family of medications in general. And with that, we reach the end of this video. Thank you guys for watching. Please support this video by giving it a like and commenting your ideas and questions. And this video is a part of a bigger class. It's called the CNS Pharmacology Masterclass that will appear on your monitor right now if you want to check it out.